This is Andre broadcasting from Vitebsk, the northern part of Belarus. And there aren't many guys on the live now, so I'll just run a basic introduction of who I am and uh, what this video is about. And if more people join up on the way, we'll be able to run the questions and answer things, as we always do. In the first line, I'm uh, a certified translator and a real estate concierge, which means I'm officially uh, helping people to relocate to Belarus. And the uh, general matters are visa questions, the uh, general matters are immigration things, settling down, finding a business or finding some kind of a um, basis here in Belarus. By the way, tell me if the video and the sound is okay. I'm here in the last McDonald's of uh, Belarus in the north here. The place is no longer called McDonald's, but they're serving fast food and everything. So uh, it's kind of interesting what it tastes like, but I guess I'll have to check it somewhere 30 minutes from now. Steven, hello. Nice that you joined up. Let's see if more people join our little thing and we'll be going through the list of our things to discuss today. McDonald's has shut down quite recently and there was a, an odd way in which they departed. Some Kazakhstani rich guy was holding franchise, so they first removed the billboards across the city of Minsk, then they uh, put one or two of them back or something like this. and. Eventually, the billboards have disappeared and the colorful paper bags with those uh, cakes. They have just introduced apple cake, by the way, or apple pie, whatever it's called. Now, you may be better English speakers than I am, so tell me if that thing which normally came with cherry stuffing is a pie or cake. I'm ashamed to say I always confuse these two. That's how they look now, that's what the package looks now. The glass is behind the phone. I'm afraid I have to keep it there so that you could see me upright. And the whole pipe. Thank you very much, Stephen. Maybe I'll remember it from now on. Have a look around. The place looks trendy and they have this Christmas shit. Although Christmas is not really that sad. Not to hurt the feelings of the good Catholics, but you know, all the, uh, all the capitalist decor about parties these days are the same all the way through, a lot of light, a lot of plastic and a lot, a lot of cheap stuff and little behind there. Little at the basement of the, of the holidays. We are more into Russian Orthodox culture ourselves, West is more Catholic. So 25th of December, if somebody is interested in that, 25th of December is more of a Catholic thing and they celebrate it more there, plus the New Year. We have been Soviet, that is atheist, for the last 50-70 years. Uh, more than that, actually. I'm getting a bit older. So the point was about the New Year's Eve and the New Year being the major holiday with fir tree and, of course, the red pentagram on top of it as the symbol of the Soviet state. So I guess anybody who wanted to join us up joined and anybody who is watching a different live, if you know what I mean, will be joining us joining us up later. So let's run the very first thing. Once I uh, release my last video about the uh, way the bad boy is operating, uh, the way the houses get purchased and the way that residency get, get, gets cancelled, and they do get cancelled, I just heard that another chap uh, had to leave Belarus, although he actually was featured in one of the recent videos by the uh, bad boy, by our friend. And uh, that's kind of funny because he brainwashes his clients so well, saying that I'm the worst guy to be confronted with or to be dealing with. And if you ever make, uh, get me a call or ask me for advice, then he'll, he's out of their lives and their lives will be ditched for good. So when I tried to approach one of the guys from that video, he said, no, don't approach us, don't speak to us. That's their problem. I guess they'll sort it out and their money that are gone will be their own trouble to retrieve. The video about that house in the village is about a house in the village sitting three hours away in uh, Brest region, interestingly enough, southwest from Minsk. And here in Vitebsk, uh, extreme southeast of Belarus, is where that... Uh, never mind that. 
The cost of the house was originally roughly, that's very rough estimate, uh, three to four thousand US dollars. And interestingly enough, the same Belarusian guy who purchased houses for Kavaljit, if you have been tracking the last videos, my client and my friend, and the very same guy purchased them and I'm pretty sure they never saw the purchase contract and the original price of the house. So the thing worked the same way, but apparently the check didn't go through and apparently one of the residences got cancelled. That's sad, but the guys picked the wrong operator. If they had contacted me in summertime, they would have got some money back by now. So somebody asked if Kevaljit and me are going to open up a little office to relocate businesses over here to Belarus. Firstly, when I released the video about uh, cafe on sale, there were very few questions asking about it, asking about the um, business purchase, asking about the details of the cafe. So guys, if you're interested in the subject of businesses, we can look into the matter deeply, but while the war is ongoing, we're not in the condition to tell you that the place is fine and nice and you should bring a hundred thousand bucks over here and kickstart something. It's true that some businesses are rolling and like I told you on in the last video about businesses, there were maybe a thousand offers of very various businesses on sale, starting from coffee points worth five to ten thousand dollars to all sorts of imaginable and unimaginable hotels and resorts which could probably beat uh, some places in Khmer, Turkey, if there was only a bit more sun than 40 days in our charming country. Now there's blizzard, snowstorm basically outside here, and I hope the McDonald's place will not be buried in snow by the time I'm done with my broadcast. So guys, the general idea is that yes, we have a, an office in India in mind to keep the relocation process solid and smooth, so as to get the right people in here and get their uh, plans straight, not the way Kavaljit's uh, application was handled by wrong operators. And this may probably happen next year, probably after January or February. You see, we are having a court case coming, our first court case against the bad guys. Like I told you previously, the official ways and official wheels here are turning drastically slow. So. The very first case is going to be around January and Kavaljit, who was deported, according to some blogger here, will be actually cheerfully coming back to Belarus and sorting out, straightening out his things. Good, good evening, Kavaljit. I'm happy you joined us. Guys, confirm, please, with a like or a smiley or something that you can hear and see me well. We'll continue. I hope the Mac music isn't too loud outside there. How do you see me? How do you read me? And let's run the uh, basic questions and answers then. Although these questions weren't really addressed to me. Cheers to America. Let's start with the basics. So, what was the cheapest uh, business that one can operate and handle? The cheapest business for uh, someone relocating to Belarus to operate is some business that he or she knows about. Hello Ravi, nice to meet you. And uh, the cheapest business could be anything, again from a cheap coffee point or some printing spot. I saw some um, uh, like mobile phone place where screens are attached to the screen and uh, you know the um, screen uh, plastic or screen glass protection is attached and some fancy things are printed out for the for the phones that cost some five thousand dollars and there were printing machines and other devices involved to something as uh, uh, something more complicated like a department store a little corner store some of these can be found in minsk or some shawarma place as long as you know how to cook and what you're doing and speak some russian uh, speaking about someone else question about the cheapest Russian language school. And that uh, question may be viewed. Hello Rohit, now it's nice to meet you. Uh, the school thing can be viewed in two different aspects. You can come on a student visa and specifically learn Russian for a year. Student visa can be converted into residency and that allows you to stay but also to learn actually rather than hang around and do your own thing. And the cheapest university has to be researched. The uh, universities are the only places that can get your student visa converted to residency. Uh, I'm afraid my Russian uh, language school is uh, very much buried since February this year. I guess you know why. 
and uh, generally speaking Russian, some Russian is much, much uh, easier for you if you're going to operate any things here because finding trustworthy personnel is really challenging. So we will be looking for the right people and the right businesses to resell in January and February, uh, as long as the geopolitical situation doesn't, doesn't change to the worse. And we will see how this works with the relocating people because people in the EU may feel that the uh, heating bills and electricity bills are a little bit undemocratic this season and uh, some of my German refugees are telling me that the uh, EU businesses are going to be very hurt by these bills this, this winter time. So what's the next thing? Some guy wants to operate a gas station and convenience store I guess convenience store is some kind of a little store with all the everyday things. It's not a problem to get that and it's not a problem to get a tobacco and alcohol license. Speaking of someone else's question further, alcohol shop. Uh, it just depends on the throughput of the people and where you get the booze and how you're going to compete with multiple state shops and uh, private supermarkets over here selling all these things. Uh, it's unlikely you'll get the license to produce alcohol, it's a complicated process, but importing some alcohol is also a bit challenging. And this is one of the vital things that has a costly ticket to get involved in, as they say. And running a simple store, a conventional store, is just not a problem. You'll get a couple of cashiers, some cleaner, and that would be it. People coming in and out, just find a good spot with an adequate rent. And there are more such spots emerging in central Minsk, by the way. Gas station is a no-no. I don't think you have connections for that kind of a business, because just like alcohol, fuel business here in Belarus may have some bureaucratic complications, let's call it that way, and it's not the easiest field to bring your money into. You should consider something else. Then, speaking of the uh, buying properties. The properties uh, in uh, Belarus, as you know from my previous videos, and basically my whole series of relocation fraud videos is accenting on village houses being no longer good. Uh, bullshit village houses being no longer good for the residency because the government is aware of the bad boy and the government is taking special steps, control steps, which are getting residencies cancelled, as you know, as we speak. And as I just told you, one of the recent cases advertised by my friend, so to speak, uh, actually was about the successful relocation of an Indian family. You can message them directly and ask them if they all still have residencies. Try that, because the guys aren't really responsive to my messages, and I know why. So, speaking of properties, that's the big, best, meaning the simplest way to get your ticket into Belarus for a year plus, and then extend it as many years as you wish, as long as it's a decent, good house, and let's say roughly uh, one hour away from Minsk, a house would cost $20,000 plus, um, fitting all the requirements of the government, written and unwritten requirements. Uh, you know that the house has to be fit for living, it's a very stretching definition, but also if you're buying a property like this, you have to um, present a serious scheme, serious looking plan, uh, where you will not be commuting daily to the city of Minsk to do business, because in the province your business has very thin prospects, like the stores or hotels, whatever you have in mind. And the city of Minsk living uh, is a little bit on the expensive side. I mean, you have to come up with a plan where you're not really buying a piece of uh, furniture instead of a house that has the paper that says it's a house and then somehow let relocate to Minsk. People who did that again are losing their residencies right now and uh, that's very regrettable because they chose the wrong method. So a flat in a smaller city like uh, Grodno, Mogilov or Vitebsk, uh, one room here in Vitebsk could uh, roughly go at $25,000 plus, is a much better idea. Harmeet, nice to meet you and happy birthday again. And, uh, and, and guys, prepare your questions by the way. Uh, we're moving to another question here. 
somebody asks for more details about social security in Belarus. Social security has a very broad definition. I'm no expert on that. I'm no expert on taxation either. By the way, profit uh, income tax in Belarus is 13%. But depending on your profession, uh, all the professions are split into different categories and different employment modes. They have a whole variety of the most complicated and brain-breaking things uh, about them, about calculating tax, about paying it uh, every three months, every year, every month. So taxation and social security things here in Belarus are a bit complicated, but generally it looks like this. Social security, social security fund has a huge black hole in it and the uh, number of pensioners, which now roughly make over a quarter of the population of Belarus. We have 9 million. It's around 3 million pensioners, give or take. And uh, the pensioners are getting their pensions deducted from the earnings of the current young guys. I'm a sort of an old young guy now, but I still have some 20 years to earn my own pension. As far as I understand, from next year on, the ladies will be retiring age 60 and men will be retiring at age 63. And to get a, a labor pension, as they call it, the labor record, the working record, has to be straight for 20 years. So there has to be a total of 20 years of employment recorded uh, with a person and the employers uh, having paid uh, these allocations into pension fund, some 34%, 33% uh, from one's salary. This allows somebody to be entitled to a pension when they retire. So, for instance, uh, in agriculture, there are a lot of farms that do not really pay the pension tax, and the um, debt before pension fund is huge. That's why there is a hole in that fund. So their retiring folks actually hear very unpleasant things from the government that is not paying them pension because for a while they weren't, uh, their employers weren't busy doing that, weren't busy filling the fund of the pensions. Animal farming in Belarus, it's a bit complicated. Uh, if we depart from the animal farm as a novel, we can look into different aspects of breeding sheep, breeding chicken and everything, which is a complicated setup and you have to know about the local species and local climate and local um, variety of uh, soil and everything and basically know a lot about what you're doing, otherwise animal farming here in Belarus is kind of too complicated an enterprise and too risky. At some point, I've uh, never looked into that kind of a production process myself because it uh, really takes up a lot of responsibility, a lot of work. Uh, for instance, my grandparents were early risers to keep the two cows and there were a couple of pigs and a load of chicken. And that's just quite complicated if there's a huge bunch of these uh, four-legged fellas in your backyard. Generally, it's not impossible, but generally it's a bit complicated as well especially finding the right land speaking of the land guys uh, as foreigners you will be uh, renting the land from the government and although 0.25 hectare uh, lot, lot normally comes with a house the um, rest of the land has to be rented from the government from the local village council the price will depend on the location and other factors and generally speaking the uh, there are a bunch of farmers, there are some 2,000 private farmers in Belarus. So the um, farming project is not impossible, but only if you have a great deal of patience, energy and a few coins in your pocket, in both pockets. The um, retirement planning for Belarus. Uh, I won't be even improvising anything about uh, wiring your pension to Belarus. You know perfectly now that if your go government is, uh, if you're coming from a Western country, let's say, if you're from US, the uh, uh, pension uh, withdrawn from here or wired down here will be a bit of a problem because any US dollar transfers are quite a bit of a lottery and any US dollar transfers may be held by the US Treasury because of the sanctions that are imposed on Belarus. And the 
Retirement here is only uh, good if you have some assets as cash, if you bring in some capitals from... Uh, Ravi, I see your question, I'll get to that a little later. Uh, the um, uh, retirement... Uh, the re as a retirement ground, Belarus is really good because it's uh, safe. Uh, if you're not into hot countries like Spain, somewhere where you can get those oranges from your tree in the backyard, the uh, uh, climate here is quite okay because winter is like winter and summer is like summer so there's no big deal and there are a few american pensioners who are actually living in belarus that i know of one of them is in vitebsk and um, uh, if you're watching uh, i'm sending my best regards the um, Money wire is the only problem. Maybe your favorite sofa and your favorite dog shipped from America may be a little challenge, but it's it's also doable. It can be handled. Uh, the um, retirement in Belarus is really enjoyable if you have earned some capitals overseas. And life is also enjoyable if you get your salary from overseas or you have some solid business over here. And that's for sure. Uh, Ravi, I'm not naming any names, but like I told you officially uh, in several uh, previous uh, versions of my videos, so several releases of my video, um, when we win the court, I'll be able to release the name. But again, uh, if you can read between the lines and if you can read uh, the emotion of a statement I would like to say openly, I would like to say publicly that Priyan Shuja is a huge caliber, respectable businessman, uh, is a great scale operator. Neil has said a different word instead of scale, but uh, this gentleman is of course not stupid and not as dishonest to, as to screw his own fellow countrymen by doing something as idiotic as reselling cheap uh, bullshit village houses uh, using crypto wallets somewhere else overseas. I don't think Mr. Ja, Priyanshu Ja, whose voice is so uh, charming, will be doing that. So I hope you understand what I mean by that. And uh, when we get the court rolling, we'll be releasing more names, more details. Otherwise, guys, please be tolerant and be understanding of the local realities. And, uh, and, 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 and what else? Vikram. Okay. Yes, I'm not a dating advisor. Maybe it's a shame, but uh, I'm into different things, real estate and stuff like that. Another Nathale, when you come to Belarus and start dealing with legal matters, you'll be understanding uh, my point about names named or not named and about what I have just said. I'm not protecting anybody. And uh, two more points, by the way. Thank you for reminding. Uh, the Indian Embassy was unhappy to hear in my video that uh, I'm saying some wrong things about them not doing anything. I'm still pretty certain that the Indian Embassy could do better and I respect them in their official capacity, but instead of telling us uh, after we presented the case that we are, we could have been a bit smarter, let's put it in a delicate way, they just, uh, I don't know if they took any other steps. Uh, thank you, Nathiel. The um, steps that Indian Embassy could do and that I'm pretty much inviting them to do, if anybody has doubts of the bad boy's uh, integrity, I think me, and by far I'm the only guy who is involved in the Indian story who is actually not Indian and who is try trying to get things straight, uh, balancing between the Pakistani fraudster and an Indian fraudster and their respective embassies who couldn't care less. I suggest that I can come up before a bloody camera, switch it live, and get the bad boy next to us and some embassy personnel, and I'd like to uh, 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 ask him a few questions about what he is doing, and uh, how come that there are so many houses that got sold via him, and the people aren't really happy with what happened, and a lot of people who got deported or who got their residences cancelled or something like this. By now we have four cases on the table 
uh, with uh, data, with everything, two people are still kind of waiting for their money back and all this bullshit that they like so much to hear. And two guys, including my friend, are uh, ready to take solid steps. And again, we'll be rolling the court case in January, so be patient and there'll be more videos coming. If you support the videos, if you support the channel with a couple of dollars, that will be just helping the case and uh, I'll uh, pay off that little pie I, I just bought. How are Belarusians surviving cold weather? That's really great. I guess there's a concept, uh, military concept of the multiple layers, which I'm trying to uh, follow personally. As long as you have more than two or three layers of clothing on you, you'll be just okay. Obviously, people from a different climate aren't used to that kind of humidity and temperature. So uh, you may you may make it four or five layers. You might appreciate it for a donation. The uh, layer concept can be accompanied with uh, different other practices, but definitely they're not drinks. The uh, stereotypes about boozing just to survive the winter. The winter here lasts for three months, give or take. So. And boozing throughout that period is only common for the villagers where jobs are few in numbers and uh, lack of uh, uh, ways of whiling the time away gets people into the vodka shop or if they're retired, if they're a retired man, they're frequent guests down there. So that's about it. Uh, Mitilesh. I can't say Mitilesh my friend, but Mitilesh our friend, let's say, could have been a bit more public about what he saw and what he uh, went through over here. And although he's, uh, I'll be releasing video in three days, Mitlish, I'm sorry, but we're really waiting for that video to come out with your impressions of Belarus and the local relocation operators. You can probably contact him directly to ask about how he lived here and how was his experience with relocation and everything and uh, whether or not he recommends certain operators to um, as, as service providers, basically. Now, guys, essentially this is almost all I wanted to say. I have a couple more um, questions to elaborate on. I'm ready to discuss questions with you, whatever relocation questions you may have. Today I'm generous, and as long as it's not a specialist consultancy, I'll be happy to enlighten you on different aspects of life and living in Belarus. Please fire away a question or two if you have any. By the way, speaking of the cold season, it's mandatory in Belarus to use winter tires. So anybody with a car always has a set of tires or set of wheels and tires that they replace every 2nd of or 1st of December. So when the temperature drops under 7 centigrade, the drivers have to uh, take care of the tire issue. Otherwise, they get fined. Speaking of driving, I'm not sure if India is a party to the Vienna Convention of 1968 and if they haven't signed that treaty their driving license has to be translated here with notary verification so that's the uh, deal here for the drivers from different countries if they want to rent or buy a, lo a car locally and uh, if we're speaking of cars uh, tax for a car here isn't too bad, up to hundred dollars a year, depending on the car's model and the car year of production and engine volume, I guess. No, not the engine volume, the car's overall weight. And the uh, other thing about the cars, uh, the uh, fines. If you exceed the uh, speed by some 10 kilometers per hour over the limit, it's basically less than ten dollars it's seven dollars fine and uh, if you exceed by some 20 kilometers per hour it's roughly 25 or something us dollars in, in equivalent they uh, you, you they measure the fines in ba basic units base units or base values are uh, base value is uh, 32 ruble unit and uh, that it increases year on year that's why there is a notion of base units so when uh, after January the 1st, base unit here equals 35 rubles, for instance. That's my rough prediction. 
uh, to reflect uh, inflation and other things. And the uh, fines will respectively increase, but they don't have to rewrite the book because uh, breaking the speed limit by 10 kilometers per hour will still be one base unit or half base unit, depending on the circumstances. Obviously, there is little tolerance to drinking when driving, and then that thing gets you deported, while a residency, temporary residency holder has five little things, five violations to get his residency cancelled. Uh, there's one huge violation, for instance, drunk driving, that gets the residency cancelled. That's how it works. Any more questions, guys? Anything at all? While you are summoning your thoughts, let's mention that the war is ongoing between Russia and Ukraine. There is a small army group of Russian troops hanging about eastern Belarus, and the uh, likelihood of any, let's say, maneuvers, any moves from Belarus into Ukraine seem very unlikely. Although, if you hear some experts on one side, some things are likely. Um, if experts from the so-called experts from the other side make these things less likely everything is likely these days so what's obvious for now that is that the Belarusians are um, doing their homework and uh, are improving their records revising their records of the draft people of the potential military servicemen and that's the only thing that is ongoing. There may be some little exercise here and there, especially when NATO is muscling up you know, by the western border, but there is nothing pointing at any aggression moves from the side of Belarus. I know it's a very arguable way to put it, but that's just the way it is. But in terms of geopolitics, that affects relocation, that affects PR in the first line, attractiveness of Belarus as a relocation destination, which is hurting my business as well and this is affecting logistics and supplies and all these things from west oriented are becoming east oriented right now so let's think of some one last subject to discuss guys if there are no questions if everything is kind of clear let me try and cover some one last thing Uh, one last thing could be bank accounts and travel. Let's start with travel. Travel on visa into Belarus is not limited. The only thing of point of limit is the eastern border with Russia, which you can only cross if you fly over from Moscow or via Moscow. Let's visit Russia now with, without visas from Western countries. No, there's no rule about Russia to Belarus traffic visa free to residency holders otherwise all the headlines would be about it from what i know uh, russia to belarus travels for non-citizens requires visa on uh, both sides so if you are a temporary resident of belarus obviously you have multiple visa to belarus you can take a flight to russia after you've got a russian visa otherwise kavalji wouldn't uh, get his visa in Russian embassy, by the way, I would like to extend our thanks, I guess, to the Indian embassy for uh, making it uh, possible in such a short notice. They helped their fellow countrymen, and uh, this is kind of very, very sweet. Diplomats are helping a person out in a, a little trouble like that. So, uh, travel through the western border is okay, although the, there is a backlog of trucks out of Belarus. The Polish customs aren't very, uh, let's say, lively, aren't very fast. And the same thing with Lithuanians, I guess. Now, weather adds up to this trouble. The um, travel is generally not impossible, and the folks from the sanctioned countries or the countries that sanction Belarus aren't in any trouble or in any, in any harm's way. The uh, EU, the Americans, Canadians, uh, whatever, Australians, they are just 
uh, coming in here visa free except for Americans of course or on a visa through the western border or by means of flying in flying via Dubai flying via Turkey flying via Moscow that requires Russian visa and the banks the banks are kind of becoming hungry the banks are charging foreigners a certain commission to launch up an account some banks it's a bit more complicated than just that let's say they started charging foreigners to set up an account you sometimes pay nothing i think i won't name the banks because all this uh, game changes once in a while the uh, banks charge uh, around 100 bucks to set up an account and to issue a card or at some point they uh, do not charge anything if you set up account but if you release a card like visa or mastercard there is a commission involved a bunch of russians have been through here to open up a belarusian bank account to facilitate their foreign shopping operations because russian cards aren't really accepted in, in many 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 places so guys i guess everything is quite clear on your end it was a pleasure to discuss things and the recent news from belarus we're still looking for our friend zia the pakistani guy who is not really a lawyer so make sure that you don't deal with this guy or don't give him any money no matter what is promised in return and hopefully either our police or the russian police will get his sore ass and will get him held responsible for what he did thank you very much for watching the live uh, maybe more questions uh, next time there is a live i guess it's gonna be in january next year maybe there'll be a little thing between christmas and new year just to say hello to everybody and to congratulate you with 2023 rabbit year if that's on your calendar and uh, thank you for watching this was andre from belarus maybe any questions on the last minute anything at all yeah the embassy was quite helpful with the logistics i wish you to be healthy wise and inescapably that will uh, be reflected in your wallet guys thank you very much for watching and see you sometime next week in a recorded video cheers